if I want to jump on that with yeah. a little bit of what you were talking about there with the use of member versus other language, you mentioned in passing that it sort of empowers the people in the community to decide what they want to be called. And then we work with them as part of that community. What would you counsel current students and people out there in the information field in terms of identifying the idea that our language isn't keeping up with our changing situations? And what can we be doing to actually make that language more reflective beyond just saying, what do you want to be called? Yeah, it, it's because it, you're right. It pervades everything we do. And one of the what's interesting, of course, is there's a strong history of language in librarianship. Um, in cataloging, there's the concept of literary warrant. When you use terms and descriptors, whether they're from a, a, a taxonomy or controlled vocabulary or keywords, what have you, those words should come from the community and um, or their application, right? So if you have a children's book about my two dads, does that go in the children's section or does that go in the controversial section or does that go into the gender section? Does that go into where does it go should come from, once again, a knowledge and interface and interaction with the community. Um, I was talking with a, a new dean of a library program, and she was talking about doing curriculum changes. And she had just met with a, the catalogers, sort of association of catalogers in the area. And they said, you're doing a great job of teaching our students the, the student to the book, right? I read this book. I, I can understand this book. I can describe this book. But you need to be teaching them the student to the community to the book, right? How, what term, what language? And so that's part of the modernization. Also literally language usage, how we come in and, you know, from, you know, Queens Library collecting hundred plus languages and what do we do with those different uh, languages and how do we bring them in? And this comes to me to a larger concept, which is for a long time, we used to take all this discussion about community engagement, with pocket language, and we threw it in this big bucket called soft skills. And, you know, when one of the things that people don't necessarily realize is that students coming into library science program, and not every librarian goes through a library science program, but it's pretty representative sample. Students used to come in in their late 30s, second career. They came with a lot of professional background. They came with a lot of basic training and professionalism and engagement. And now that is in the low or mid 20s. We get a lot of people coming directly from undergraduate programs into graduate programs of library science. They need to learn community engagement, soft skills of how do you talk to a community, find out what they care about, know about, know what the cultural taboos are, know who the senior elders are, know who the control structures within it, know political literacy. We can no longer just treat it like a big bucket of soft skills. And so now we are increasingly in research and in education, turning the soft skills into the concept of engagement and cultural literacy and cultural understanding. And that's not just keywords for critical race theory and critical librarianship that has a place and certainly informs that, but it is that larger concept that as librarians, your job is to make that human being over there a better human being, not to make sure that all this stuff's in the right place, just in case that person wants to be a good human being. So that's language comes into this 100%. And, and we need to interrogate our own use of language. And a lot of it is we need to invite our communities into that process as well.